Welcome everyone to Catholic Sunday Scriptures in Context. This is a ministry of the Augustinian Order and St. Paul Parish, the soul and the heart of the Italian market in South Philly. Today we focus on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, September 16, 17, 2023. Our first reading comes from the book of Sirach. Uh, this was written, we almost know specifically, around the year 175. Then it was translated by his grandson. Uh, the author is Jesus ben Sira, and uh, his grand, who wrote in Jerusalem. I'm sorry for the hesitation there. And uh, his grandson, who moved to Alexandria, translated there. And he says that at the beginning of the book. So we have very specific information about the origin of this book. And what Ben Sira is trying to do is preserve Jewish teaching because at this time, the Seleucids, who had taken over the land of the Jewish people, were trying to impose Greek thought and Greek ideas. And Ben Sira is telling them, our own wisdom is worth preserving. And this style here, this way he does it, is called didactic teaching. So he has this main idea, which we see in the first four lines, and then he builds on it and describes what happens if you don't forgive. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then, when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another except healing from the Lord and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins. Remember your last days, set amnesty aside. Remember death and decay and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant and overlook faults. Our second reading is from Romans, and this is the last passage from Romans we will have. We've heard from Paul's letter for the last 16 weeks. And after all these discussions about the differences between Jews and Gentiles, Paul is finally reflecting on their use of the law. And he actually has, right before this, a little passage about dietary laws. And he reflects, you know, the Jewish people don't eat pork, and in not eating pork, they honor God. And the Gentiles do eat pork and thank God for the gift of pork. And, you know, these differences are minor because in the end, we are all the Lord's and we, whether in life, in death, we belong to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. And lastly, we have this passage from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew has been talking about sin in the last two Sundays and this one here about what we should do. And so Peter asks this question, how long do we have to forgive someone? You know, this is fine a couple times, but after a while. And Jesus says, limitless, 70 times seven. It's referring to a passage, I think, in the book of Genesis. And the purpose of this teaching is Christians are not to take vengeance, but to exercise forgiveness. And in this passage, you'll see the translation here is not probably a good one. It says a huge amount versus a much smaller amount. And the, what Matthew mentions, you know, just to give it some context, what the servant owes the king is almost like equivalent to the debt of a nation, 10,000 talents. And yet what the servant is owed by his, um, you know, his friend it's just a mere, almost like a, a a person's salary, just even maybe a third of a person's salary. Uh, Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered him, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. 
At that, the servant fell down, did him homage and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt but you, because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. If, please pray for peace in Ukraine. And if you think this would be helpful to someone, please pass it on. Thank you very much.